Hey everybody, my name is Joey. Thank you so much for watching today. As a church, we are wanting the voice of faith to be a life-changing message. We want to spread encouragement and spread God as much as we can. Today, we pray that you are filled with faith and filled with hope as you hear the voice of faith. Check out this message from Pastor Lisa. Hi everybody, it's so good to be with you again on the Voice of Faith broadcast. You know, we've been doing these for well over a year. Can you believe that? It's just been amazing, all of the changes and all of the good things that God has done in the last year. And I tell you, if you're a Christian and you don't have a home church, I wanna invite you to come to our church because I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things. We have rebounded out of COVID and out of last year in an amazing way. God has just been uh, doing some amazing things for us and through us. And if you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and be a part of what God is doing here. We have two campuses, one in Hemet, California, and one in Murrieta, California. And uh, you can watch us online, but we really invite you to come on out. It's time to come back to church. It's time to be fed the word. It's time to be in that corporate um, worship and, and let the fire of God just be ignited in your heart. And it's time to work together. It's time to put your hand to something. If you've never done anything for the Lord before, there's opportunities at our church for you to be used by God and to evangelize and tell other people about Jesus and about what He can do in their life. So we invite you to come out and join us. Amen. I want to read a verse to you out of Colossians 2 and verse 15. This is in the Phillips translation. And I don't have time to read the whole passage, but I want to start with verse 15. This passage talks about what Jesus has done for us, what Jesus has, has done in conquering the enemy on our behalf. It says this, it says, and then having drawn the sting of all the powers ranged against us. You know, Jesus did this because of, of the curse that was against us, sin that was against us. Jesus did this for us. You know, He was reigning above sin. He was reigning above the curse whenever uh, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. But because of what they did, it brought it into the lives of all of mankind. It, it brought it into our world. But you know, Jesus came and inserted Himself in that situation because He was the only one qualified to be the perfect sacrifice. And He took our sin. He took the curse upon Himself to conquer it and to deliver us from it. And it talks about that right here. It says, And then having drawn the sting of all the powers ranged against us, He exposed them, He shattered them, He emptied them, He defeated them, glory to God, in His final glorious triumphant act. Praise God. Jesus powerfully defeated the enemy on your behalf. Glory to God. The devil is under our feet because of what Christ has done for his people. But you know, we have to understand this, that although the enemy is defeated, and he is, he's still not imprisoned yet. He roams this earth. The Bible says he roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But God has given us a good word. He said for us to resist him, resist the devil, steadfast in the faith. So although he's out here roaming the planet, seeking whom he can destroy, he doesn't have to destroy you. He doesn't have to defeat you. You can stand in the victory of Christ and resist the devil. And the Bible says he has to flee from you. But I want to show you something over here in Ephesians 6 and verse 11 in the Amplified Version, not the Amplified Classic, but the Amplified Version. It gives us some insight into how the enemy works against our life. It says, put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier. Listen to this. So that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes 
look at this word, and the strategies and deceits of the devil. You know, the devil likes to strategize against the people of God. You know, just like a, a, a team, say you've got a soccer team or a baseball team or a basketball team, you know, they strategize on how they're going to win against the other team. They've got a plan. They've got a strategy. Well, you know, just like they strategize in a game, the devil strategizes against you. He's always trying to come up with some way, some plan to hinder you in your life, to stop you in your life, to bring defeat to your life. But I tell you what God did. God reveals his plans. The devil doesn't have anything that he's trying to do that the Holy Spirit won't make you wise about and reveal to you. In fact, the Bible says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Well, you know, one of the things that I see the enemy doing today, one of the strategies of the enemy I see today is this fear and this intimidation against Christians. You know, it's not popular anymore to believe the Bible. Do you know that if you speak up for the Word of God, if you speak up for Jesus, that you become a target? They don't like what you have to say. And a lot of Christians are cowering down. They're backing off when they should be standing up. You know what the Bible says about us? He says the righteous are as bold as a lion. God has called us, brother and sister, <laughs> to be bold and to be courageous and to lift up our voice for righteousness and to lift up our voice for truth. And not everybody likes that. Not everybody uh, wants to hear what we have to say. And they'll let you know that in a hurry. Even some Christians, I'm amazed at how many Christians are backing off of truth. Uh, and maybe they won't renounce the truth, but they're too afraid to say anything about the truth or they're kind of somewhere in the middle. I'm going to tell you, there's no middle ground. If you're a Christ follower, you have got to be a Bible follower and the Bible is true. I don't care who disagrees with it. The Bible is true. And when you agree with the Bible, you're on the right side. And we need to do more than what we're doing right now. Christians need to voice up their, they need to lift up their voice, be a voice for God in this hour and speak for Jesus Christ, speak out for him and speak out for his word. And I'm going to tell you when it comes to the gospel, we see many people in the church that are backing off of even that. You know, I've heard people say, well, you know, I don't want to tell somebody that what they believe is wrong. Well, you know, I just don't know how God could, you know, allow people to go to hell just because, you know, they call on other gods or I just don't, I don't, well, listen, we don't have to like it, but we have to believe what the Bible says. And we've got to have a conviction about that. And we have got to have an attitude that we will not compromise that and that we will boldly proclaim that Jesus is Lord and that He is the only way to the Father. Only by receiving Him as the Lord of your life, only by being washed in the blood of Jesus, that's what makes you right with God. That's what makes you righteous and that's what makes you accepted in the Beloved. That's what makes heaven your home is when you receive Jesus Christ. Listen, you have a voice. Brother, sister in the Lord, you have been given a voice. God's given that to you, not to sit off in the corner somewhere. He has given that to you so that you will stand up boldly and proclaim His Word and proclaim the name of Jesus in this hour. The world is lost and undone. They are sin sick. They are confused. They don't know which way to turn. They need a church with power, a church with boldness that will stand up with conviction and boldly declare Jesus is the answer for your life. Jesus is the answer for your eternity. Amen. Don't let the strategy of intimidation cause you to back off and back down 
This is the time for the church to be bold. Amen. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices, and we're not going to cower down to him. We're going to push back and we're going to resist the devil. We're going to resist intimidation. We're going to resist fear. We're going to walk in courage, hallelujah, and in power and boldly proclaim truth before he comes. Amen. Praise God. I hope that encouraged you, inspired you. You know, we have something to say. We have the right message. If there's anybody in the world today that has the right message, it's the church. And it's Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank you for being with us. Join us again next time. We've got some more good things to share with you to encourage your heart. Amen. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching today. As you know, with everything happening today, it is vital that Faith World is able to continue to spread Jesus. We cannot do this without you, the church. So at the end of each video, we always want to give you an opportunity to give so that you can be blessed. The ways that you can give are on the screen. Also, if you need prayer, please email, message us, or call the church so that we can pray with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a blessed weekend. We will see you next time on The Voice of Faith.